In this video, I'm going to show you how to use to create a wireframe using Pencil. Pencil is free and it works on both Mac and PC, and it's a nice way to draw a, a quick sketch of what your website should look like. And I'll typically do a quick sketch of at least each of the top level and one representative lower level page. I'm going to start by creating a new page. And I'm going to call it index. I usually call it what I'm going to call, and I'm going to do it as a web page long, 900 pixels long and I'm going to hit apply and that gives me something that is about the size of my web page then I draw boxes on my page to represent where my div tags are going to go so I usually am going to put a box for the header and usually and you can do this up here on the top we can get the size up here so I can type in 960 and 150 is okay sometimes I go a little narrower and we'll make it actually a little bit narrower, 130. That's about what I like for a header. Now I usually like to actually set the lines on these to none, but the color I like to make like a light gray so that that just shows me where my different divs are. And I usually work from the back forward. So I'm going to put in, this is going to be a really simple layout. I'm going to have a navigation box. This is going to represent where my navigation would go and again I'm going to set it to zero and color to gray and I might move it up just a little bit I'm using the no, it doesn't want to work with the arrows so I can use these arrows up here to adjust slightly and I'm leaving them um, two pixels between them that's 165 and we'll make it out an even 450 and I think I'm good with that. Okay, so now I'm going to put in another box and this is going to be for my main content. And I usually start by dragging it out and then I can tweak it a little bit to get it positioned where I want. and have it be exactly the size that I want. And I'll usually go back and forth between using the arrows and tweaking it here on the width. And again, I would set the line to zero, set the color to light gray, and if I wanted to, I could keep going with a footer. I'm not gonna do that right now, but I could. I do wanna put this one a little closer to the top. And so that gives me basically where the div tags will be for my site. And so that I'd have a container represented by the outside, a header, and a side or nav bar, and a, and a main content. Okay, so next I'm going to start building on top of this. And again, a wireframe it should be all grayscale. So I'm going to use labels to represent my text, and I can change whatever font I want to use. Usually I'm using something that's web friendly, a sans serif font, and I'll make this fairly large. And we'll just say Mary's Rubies. You'll make yours on whatever you'd like. So I'm say I'm gonna do a five page site. Now your site for your final project needs to be five pages and you should wireframe each of those pages. So I'm going to put where, where my logo would go. It should be right here. I'm going to represent hyperlinks, which would be here. If I knew what I wanted to call them, um, we could have history, as I used to have, Eli. Oops. I probably want to lock that in place. I don't know if I can lock it or not. I'd like to be able to. I don't think I can. But I can drag my links into here. I can have Nessie. History. I could have pictures. 
And I want you to use real names for your links because you're representing your site and this is where you're going to you're going to build it off of this. And so you should have real navigation. So pictures and videos. So that would represent my site. And so this would be my front page. So you may also want to have a home link. Though typically this will also link to home. Okay, so this would be my home page. And so my home page would probably would want to have a big picture with some text underneath it. And for text, I typically just use lines to represent text. And the horizontal line is nice because easy to line up. Usually the left edge will align. Right edge is typically not because it's representing a paragraph. And here we're just trying to get a feel of what the page is going to look like, which is why we're representing everything. We don't want to get into actual pictures because they actually distract what you're looking at for the design. Okay, I'm not going to make you up watch me do a whole full five page site but you can see I've set up my initial um, page and then I can do a new page actually I don't want to do that I can duplicate my page give it a new title so I would have Eli and so here for Eli I could rearrange things a bit I would probably have multiple pictures here and I might have them in various places I could adjust where my text was going to be And on these interior pages, I would probably want to have breadcrumbs. If it was a big site, I definitely would. So we could just put this in as Eli. and I can lay out each page to represent what's going to go on it. And this is important because typically what you would do is you would plan out your pages like this and then you would have your customer sign off that they're happy with it. So when you're done, you're going to end up with, and again, you can duplicate your pages because then we'd have Nessie. History, and you can go ahead and change these. And then you would change each page appropriately so that it had a slightly different layout. But lots of components would stay the same. The center area here is what would change. Now to share this with me, you want to make sure that you are frequently saving. And I'm going to save this as web project. And I'm just going to drop this one on my desktop. And you can hand that in, or what I would prefer is that you actually print everything. I want all pages.
but what I really want is to actually save this to PDF. Okay, so here what I want to do is save it to PDF. This is how I do it on a Mac. It's slightly different on a, on a PC. And we'll go ahead and save that. And then on my desktop, I should have my PDF. There we go. And you'll see that it has multiple pages. And what I actually want you to do is go ahead and upload this, or in this case, I'm going to save mine into Dreamweaver and so I'm gonna to have to go well I'm not in Dreamweaver I'm gonna to have to go to my documents and into my website so this is for web 115 so this is project 14 and I'm going to drag my web project PDF right into 14 then I can link to it from the index page in Dreamweaver. So I can open up 14. I will do it the correct way. We're going to keep it real simple. I'm not going to put all the information I want you to put in here. Plan for final. Body. And you'll notice if I just refresh right here, web project PDF. Then I can put in just equals web project dot PDF. final project plan and you should that's really all you need on this and that's just in case they go to the index page because when we that's just in case anybody ends up here it's just a sort of safety thing um, I'm gonna go ahead and save and upload that but for your index page where you have your planning your final project using pencil instead of that should be 14 not 15 that should be 14 web project dot PDF And I'll upload that. And if I go out and check Mary HTML and CSS. Oh, it didn't upload. You can always get a test though, so make sure we specifically upload that. And then try this again. And there we go. So this is how I want to see yours handed in. I'd like you to upload it to your website, put a link to it. Now you notice that I did create an index page for 14 so that if I were to or anybody was to just go to that folder, you'd just get a link to it. So this is how you need to create your final project plan. And you should have at least five pages and use um, as many of the things that you've learned in this class as actually makes sense. At, at least try to use things from at least 10 different chapters, and I think that should give you a good minimum place to start from.